Gentleman yields. Uh, I now recognize uh, the gentleman from Oklahoma, Mr. Burkeen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chief, um, you've got courage. I, uh, I, I see you uh, trying to be respectful, and I also see you being straightforward, and I, and I want to appreciate you for doing that. Um, to, for you to admit that we don't have operational control at our southern border. Again, you, you've done that in a respectful manner, and you've done that in a straightforward manner, and that took guts. Um, you said a while ago that in 2014 you were uh, plain spoken as well and said that we had a policy crisis. Um, just for the American people so we can revisit history, who was president in 2014? Mr. Obama, sir. Thank you. Um, did we have a policy crisis soon after from 2016 to 2020 uh, during the Trump administration? I will tell you that in 2019, when I was uh, deputy chief here, uh, we had a family unit crisis. And uh, so to me, I thought that at that time we had some, some vulnerabilities and uh, we addressed that relatively quickly. So if I understand you correctly, there was quick action during the 2016 to 2020 timeframe to address um, the areas that you, you saw as needing improvement. Well, I'm not sure I actually agree with how we did it. Um, separating families was a significant um, challenge for our, our organization. And uh, I will tell you that, uh, once again, there's got to be another way to solve some of the issues that we're faced with right now. Did you feel like we had operational control from 2016 to 2020 of the southern border? There were times and there were certain locations where uh, the effectiveness rate of our southwest border was above 90 percent, 85 percent. And in those areas, I had extreme confidence of what was happening along the southwest border. That's great. I appreciate your response on that. Uh, 90 percent is much better than what we heard a while ago of five sectors uh, lacking operational control out of nine on the southern border. Um, you uh, mentioned consequences. I'm grateful for you for using that word. It seems like a word that's missing in, in public dialogue on this. And so Title 42, our president is expected to um, let that lapse uh, come uh, the, the month of May. Um, do you, would you support finding alternative means to continue Title 42, um, whether it's the 18 to 45 lead, uh, age frame leading cause of death uh, that's caused 70,000? overdoses last year? Would you support continuance of, of, a, of a measure, um, health emergency, even if it had to be fentanyl-based, to continue the, the, the protocol of sending people back to their country of origin? Any tool or resource that allows law enforcement personnel to repatriate or affect some sort of consequence on uh, individuals that we encounter is going to be a useful tool. Yes, sir. Do you support the Remain in Mexico policy? I support any policy that's going to allow us to repatriate individuals back to their home country. You also said earlier that, um, that, you, that you and Secretary, uh, Secretary Mayorkas agreed, quote, infrastructure is important. Uh, Secretary Mayorkas and I agree on this. Um, the wall and, and physical barriers. Our President of the United States in 2016 as a United States Senator voted for the Secure Fence Act. As the United States, at the time, Democrats and Republicans uh, believed in physical barriers. Do you support the concept of construction of physical barriers like a wall? And do you believe they're effectual for the manpower element that they allow you and your Border Patrol agents to then reallocate elsewhere? And Congressman, I do not believe in a wall from sea to shining sea, but I do believe in infrastructure and barrier systems in concentrated areas, especially urban areas. And that's always been our practice from 2006 when I was an agent in charge in West Texas to now. But I also don't agree that we should tear down perfectly good barrier system to install something that is, you know, based upon requirements that we developed over the last few years. We tore down perfectly good infrastructure system in some areas that we should have just left alone. Del Rio was a perfect example of that. So the, under the prior administration, we had 200 plus a wall that was appropriated and the President of the United States, President Biden, by executive order, shut that down. Do you disagree with his decision to shut down the construction? Yes, sir. And, and my last question, we have a mobile one app that's coming online, uh, it's being utilized. Do you believe all that is, is uh, doing is, um, is the mobile one app leading to more utilization of consequences or less utilization of consequences? 
the mobile CBP-1 app is actually part of the process to ensure that these migrants have an opportunity to schedule an appointment with an asylum officer without having to put their lives in the hands of the cartels or the smuggling organizations. That's a, a new system. Uh, as with any new system, it takes a while for it to develop, and we continue to expand that. One of the things that we recognized about a month ago as we heard feedback from our non-governmental organization partners is that uh, there were some gaps, some language gaps, and uh, some gaps that the migrants generally couldn't understand uh, within the uh, app itself. And so we worked with our NGO partners to make some adjustments and we continue to expand that as much as we possibly can. But I do think it's part of an effective system so folks who want to apply for some sort of immigration benefit can do it from their home country. I thank you, I yield.